Well, to take now an in-depth look at what options BP has, we are joined by Geoffrey Maitland, Professor of Engineering at Imperial College London. Thank you so much for joining us, Geoffrey. Now, you probably understand this more than anyone here in the UK about actually how this works. The chances that Top Kill was actually going to succeed were very slim because it's so deep underwater. Yes, the problem with top kill was uh, a the depth that uh, so we, everything has to be done with these remotely operated vehicles, all the connections, the pumping from surface long distances. Basically, the the problem in the end was that I I think uh, largely to do with the fact that blowout preventers weren't fully shut, and so not enough oil, uh, mud could be pumped into the well to actually get a high enough pressure in there with the height of the mud column to stem the flow. And there were obviously restrictions there that were preventing that, but most of the mud was coming out of the top of the well in the end. It does seem that the president saying this is the biggest ecological catastrophe that the U.S. has ever seen, but it's actually very difficult to quantify how many millions of barrels are flowing at the moment. Yes, uh, there's been quite a lot of controversy over the, uh, the flow. It was estimated at 5,000 barrels a day for some time. Uh, the US uh, government put in train uh, a panel of experts to look at three different ways of estimating the flow. And those three different ways have come up with a range between 12,000 and 19,000 barrels a day, which is up to four times the original estimate. Uh, and some estimates have been even higher than that, but I think we can say it's probably of, of order four or five times that original estimate, about 20,000 barrels a day. Now, Jeffrey, what we know now is that BP has actually abandoned Top Kill and go on to setting more robots to do r remote kind of patching. Mm. Is that going to be a success? Well. Uh, it's one can be optimistic, uh, but we've been optimistic at every stage. I'd say the chances of uh, success were probably comparable with top kill, but the risks are higher. Uh, this time round. This time round, because what they're going to do is to uh, cut off the existing riser, uh, which has been uh, kinked on the seabed for the past month, and the fact that that has toppled over and kinked is probably restricting the flow that's coming out of the well. But in order to actually get anything on top of the blowout preventer, they've actually got to cut that off very close to the blowout preventer, below the kink uh, that's currently maybe restricting flow. So what they're going to do initially is to open up the top of the blowout preventer so uh, that the flow may well increase uh, for a short time before they can lower on top of the flange that they'll create by creating a very smooth cut. So they're going to use a, a diamond cutter saw to try and create a very smooth surface this time that they can put a rubber gasket on top of that that will seal this cap in place. It won't maintain much pressure, but it will keep seawater out to prevent the formation of these hydrates that caused the problem with the previous attempts to actually collect the oil and uh, take the oil up to the drill ship enterprise that uh, can store the oil and then take it on shore. If you literally have 10 seconds, they don't have a choice but to do this. There's not an, an alternative option. There's not an alternative option. They can put another blowout preventer on top and I think that's what they'd like to do if this uh, containment works in the first place. Jeffrey, thank you so much for joining us today. Well,